the enemy's plans and the intent of evil. Yet I say to you and to those who are filled with fear at this time, you stand in the same spirit of those who stood outside of a fiery furnace and it was turned even seven times hotter and yet there were those on the outside that were waiting for a result that did not happen because there was a restraint no matter how hot no matter how much the government the king intended to do to bring harm to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and so I speak and I say the enemy has sought to preempt war to raise up that which would be the war to end all things but I say that it is not the time and yet there were those who stood outside the den where the lions dwelt in Daniel and they expected Daniel to be eaten alive by the lions even the king and there are those who say and think the same thing we are finished America is finished Israel is finished but God says wait who was the one that restrained the mouths of the lions and freed Daniel it was I and then they stood upon the Red Sea thinking that Pharaoh and his army would succeed but what did I do I stepped in at the right time and I stepped in and I showed that through the power of my presence and my glory that I could save a nation quickly and in a day and I speak this for those who think that things shall be dragged out and that the enemy will get the upper hand and the solution is for the Lord to take his people at this time yet I see something else says God I don't just see the plans of the enemy for my spirit is here and my spirit restrains and so my spirit shall restrain. I shall restrain the mouth of the dragon. I shall restrain the claws of the bear and I shall once again put my thumb upon the mouth of one who will raise his lips and his mouth in North Korea. And God says, and I say to you, Iran, you will try and there will be that which will be seen in the air. But I will strike down the attempts that you will be put in your place and you will be embarrassed that will lead to great uprising within your nation, Iran, that will cause a regime change that the earth will see and behold that God is the God of the kings of the earth. What are you looking at? What are you expecting? What do you believe the outcome shall be of the events that are in the earth? I have already told you that I have promised something to the honor of my son and his blood. It is the harvest, the greatest harvest that has ever been given to him. And I'm looking at something else. I am seeing what they have done to the children. And there are those that are even with me who were murdered at the hand of legislation, abortion, that joined hands, they pray in heaven. And they have said, and I've spoke this to you before, they have said, Father, We live with you now, but let others who come into the earth, let them walk upon the soil of the land and fulfill their dreams that we never got to. And God says, I have heard their prayers and I have gathered their prayers and I have poured them back upon the earth that I am looking at the children, the youth that will arise in this time because I'm giving a generation to them. And it will not be given so that the earth can come together with the war that shall steal their lives and their blood 
speak from the soil of the earth. But rather I have said there will be wars and there will be rumors of wars. But I also said even though darkness would arise and gross darkness upon the people, yet I, the Lord, shall arise upon thee. And I say to you, what are you looking at? Are you expecting me to arise? I am. I shall. And the earth will know that there is something supernatural that is taking place where they will not be able to explain it with their eschatology. They'll not be able to explain it with their theology, their politics, their weapons, their armory. They will not even be able to explain it by human reasoning. For I, the Ancient of Days, and the God of Wisdom shall supersede and I will show myself strong in a way that will cause something to happen. It shall be mouths shall be gaped wide open. And I will do this. I will do this, says the Lord. For some mouths that are gaped open, I'll put my fist in it. Others, I'll fill their mouths with laughter. And there shall come once again in the church, in the nations, and even in the streets. Why are men laughing? What is this strange phenomenon of laughter? And God says, I'm doing it to once again show you that the harshness of the season that the enemy wants shall not last. Just worship Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for the peace of Israel, the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the restraint of the Almighty God over the cities of our great nation, the United States, and even over the people of the earth. Restrain the hand of of the enemy God and show the might and the power of who you are as you have said and may our eyes look to see deliverance to a Daniel and a lion's den as you said and Shadrach, Meshach and for the fourth man the manifestation of you God to appear this is what we choose to look at we look at you we look to you in our honor and we worship How many of you are looking to God? Just tell him that. I think he needs to hear it from us. Say, Lord, we look to you. Look to you. Some of you are watching right now, and some of you are in this room, and you're believing God for even employment. You've been out of work. And I just speak that the same God who just spoke to us prophetically is the same God that provides for you swiftly and quickly that jobs open up, your business begins to flourish. And God, I'm asking for something. I'm asking within 21 days that there is a shift and a turnaround for the people right now who are in the sound of my voice that desperately need something to change. And I pray for them. If you could do it in the days of Daniel, you could do it in our day. If you could cause their to be a shift in 21 days when Daniel prayed and bring angelic intervention I'm asking you to do this over Israel over the United States the nations of the earth God do it shift it as you have said as you have promised that the earth will know that you are God Amen thank you Lord Pastor Brenda do you have anything you're good let's give God a big shout of praise Amen Lord. Well, what I'll do next week is I will I'll, I'll share with you a couple prophecies. One was from April 30th, where God said that they would strike at Israel, and then one from our conference. If you remember, God was talking about how Iran would seek to strike uh, Israel, and we'll share some of those, and then I'll share a couple scriptures, and we'll preach to you. But in the meantime, I thought it was very interesting what the Lord spoke to us, and that is this: What are you looking at? You know, two nights ago, the Lord spoke to me in my sleep, and I, uh, uh, is it awakened or awoke? I don't remember which. I try not to be woke, so he 
even if I'm awoke, I try not to be awoke. I'm, I'm awakened. So whatever the proper English word is. And, I, and, and as he was speaking to me, he, he said something to me. He said, Hank, I have come to adjust your perspective. And, you know, can I tell you, I, I, I was following with a little bit of a oomph when he said that to me, like, you're adjusting my perspective. And he began to talk to me, and there's some things that I'm seeing that he's telling me to wait at the right time, and it'll come. The word of the Lord is going gonna, is gonna to come because I've seen some things. And he said to me, he said, I'm adjusting your perspective. And I had a little bit of a prideful oomph that, like, I don't need my perspective. You know, Justin, I'm the guy that's prophesying here, God, right? I don't listen to the news. And he corrected me. He said, it grieves me that people look more, you know, notice all the Bible prophecy people that are coming out all of a sudden. Where are you to stand for America before? But boy, now you're connecting Gog, Magog, Egog, and, or Egad, and at the time of eggnog, and they're lining everything up. And I'm like, well, you look more for the Antichrist than you do the Christ. And, 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 and this has offended God. And so I think we need to, you heard what he said prophetically, but I think all of us need to just take that moment and, and quit reading the newspapers and seeing what China's saying and what Russia's saying. And Do you realize what they were saying about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I never thought of that until it came out of my mouth. And what they were saying about Daniel and the lion's den. Oh yeah, they were speaking loud, but ultimately... What happened? But the Lord prevailed. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this group of people. I thank you for the message that you've given me. Father, I submit this to you. Lord, help me to relay this effectively, efficiently, and spirit-led. Holy Spirit, have your way in this morning's service. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right, so I, I... I'm around a lot of people that are very smart. And uh, speaking of Rick Green, I just want you to know, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> you know better than that. Um, but when it comes to things and matters of Israel and history, I, I am surrounded. I'm so blessed to be surrounded by a lot of people. And this week I sat down with uh, Brother Copeland and Greg Stevens, and we, we did a, a video for the network. Um, about what was going on and that sort of got me thinking and praying about and so I wanted to share some things with you so uh, I, I want you to understand something we must understand the times yes. and, and one of the reasons we understand the times is for that scripture about wars and rumors of wars that uh, Pastor Brenda quoted earlier now I, I never really thought of it this way but rumors of wars is another word for Fake news. Think about that. I never thought of it that way. Fake news. So this is why you need to understand fake news. And, and I have been shocked this week, as I'm sure all of you have, uh, seeing what's been going on in uh, all of Israel. And uh, I've talked with uh, several people live. Uh, ambassador Friedman, former UN ambassador, uh, Mike Evans there, you know, who was on the ground and, and heard some Things that I can't divulge publicly, but um, whatever you think you know, it's worse. Now, you're not going to leave today with despair and no hope, because I'm going to give you the hope. Uh, but you need to understand what's happening. So I, what I want, here's my goal for you today. I want you to leave armed with the understanding and the knowledge for when someone says, well, what about... And what about free Palestine? And what about this? And what about that? So I'm going to explain some things to you in my way, which is a little slower. <laughs> no. But I want you to, I want it, I like things very simple. And this is why, you know, I believe even on Flashpoint's been successful is because we make it very simple. Go do this. Go do that. A click here. I, I want you to understand that. So that's the good. So I, today I really believe in all seriousness, this is maybe the most important message you hear because of the ramifications of what this means. So I want to do it. We're going to do a little history lesson. I promise to not be boring. Um, if I do, you can say, Gene, you're boring. Except for Pastor Hank cannot say that. <laughs> um, 
All right, so we're going to do I have a lot of scripture. You know, Brother Copeland said something to me this week. He came, one thing I so appreciate about Kenneth Copeland is he's always in his Bible, always reading and, and understanding new revelation. And it's a constant witness to me that however much I think I know, I need to know more. Amen. Yes. And uh, he held up his Bible and he goes, Gene, everything is in here. Everything we need. And he wasn't trying to be so spiritual, but he was saying everything we need is in here. So I want to kind of give you some things to this morning that maybe you didn't know in the next 30 minutes. So we're going to go kind of fast. So if you need to take pictures of the screen, I got some things I want you to see because you need to understand. So we got some scriptures. So let's we'll start with Genesis 12. Genesis 12, and I have to <clears throat> confess something that I, uh, I have made fun of the Amplified Bible and called it the women's version because it has a lot more words. Um, but yesterday I was borrowing Terry's Amplified Bible. Can I even use your Bible? No. I apologize for the Amplified because I'm going to quote some of this in the Amplified today. Did you know the word Hamas is in Scripture 68 times? You say, well, I've never seen it. And the word Hamas in the Hebrew means violence. Back to what Brother Copeland said, everything is in the book. Everything is in the book. So Hamas, so you want to understand Hamas, you've got to understand some of the history. So let's go back to Genesis 12, verses 2 and 3. They'll put it on the screen. This is in the Amplified Bible. And I will make of you a great nation. Now this is to Abram. And I will bless you with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished and you'll be a blessing, dispensing good to others. And I will bless those who bless you, confer prosperity and happiness upon you and curse them who curses, insolent language towards you. In you will all the families and kindred of the earth be blessed by you and they will bless themselves. That's good. We're we're getting the understanding of what he's saying here. Galatians 3, uh, 7 and 8 says... Know and understand that it's really the people who live by faith who are true, the true sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify or declare righteous, put in right standing with themselves the Gentiles in consequence of faith, proclaim the gospel or foretelling the glad tidings of the Savior long beforehand to Abraham in the promise saying, you shall, in you shall the nations of the earth be blessed. Okay, so we, we've heard it quoted. You don't, you don't have to go to church very long to hear about uh, Abraham's the father of many nations. So his descendants shall be as the stars in the sky and all that. Uh, but, you know, Abraham had a, Abraham's a lot like us in some ways. And we have this tendency when things, we get a word from God. And even when it comes to prophetic words, you would get a, a prophecy, and uh, maybe it's a personal word, and you think it's going to happen right away. Now, let me take you to, uh, I was in the UK in 1990, and I was preaching at a church called Free Chapel. And it was the first time, if I had to point back to one time in my life that I saw real signs and wonders, it was that service. And it really changed me, and, and I... I, I had never experienced people falling out, not that that necessarily means anything, um, but I'd never really experienced that where I wasn't, I was just getting near people and they were going out. It was, I was as shocked as they were. And so I, I left there and on the flight, on the way home, I'm thinking, I'm getting a bus. I'm touring the nation. I got, I got a, you know, what God's done. And there were some good words. But I really thought, man, I'm coming back and I'm going to quit the job I'm working at and I'm going to travel the nation and, because God's obviously got his hands on me and this is what's going to happen. Anybody ever feel that way? You just know God's going to do something with you. Yeah, I got home and um, my wife, which is not my wife, is not the Mrs. Bailey today. It was a previous Mrs. Bailey. Um, you know, was not as, she wasn't there, but she wasn't as receptive to that. 
and I understand why. But she was not as receptive, and, and I soon found out that I had to get back into the reality of the here and now and make the house payment and make the car payment at the time and all those things, that just real life. But I really, man, I just had, man, I had a word. This is what's going to happen. This is, people are going to be affected. Nations are going to be affected by what I say and what I do. And it didn't happen. It was 14 years later before I spoke at another church. And trust me, I had stuff lined up. I had messages. And uh, I, I, I really, you know, you kind of put that on the shelf and you think, well, this is not obviously, if you're like me, and I think, uh, you, you know, you understand when I say this, you get to the point where you go, well, I must have missed it. I must have just got captured into the emotion of the moment and missed it. And if we're not careful, we will, we will depart from a word from God and equate a word from God to our own natural surroundings. Because we, we have a tendency to believe when God speaks, it's going to happen immediately. Is this making, are you with me on this? You understand? So you're in this zone of, you hear a word from God. I really wasn't planning to go down this path, but I guess somebody needs it. I wasn't, you get a word from God and you really think it's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. You know, you know, you got your signs along and, and then it doesn't happen. So if we're not careful, we'll disengage our faith. We'll disengage what God said. Or we'll, or we'll judge the word as being false. Well, you must have missed it. And I wish I could tell you that I've never done that. And, and God forgive me for the times that I thought, well, they missed it only to, for years later for it to happen. So we have to be careful when we get a word personally and when we hear a prophetic word that we don't determine its accuracy by our timeline. So we're going, we're going to believe God and Abram had a word from God that said he was going to be the father of many nations. But it didn't quite happen the way he thought it was going to be. I have another story on myself. I lived in Orlando, Florida, and I was moving to Southern California. And I don't know if you know this, but the cost of living in Orlando versus the cost of living in Southern California is a little different. <laughs> and this is back in 1997, 98, somewhere in there. So... I sold my house that I had, moved to California, had barely enough money to squeak in to come up with a minimum down payment, you know, which devastated by that. And then I realized the way they figure taxes is they, they establish the, your tax rate based on whatever your house sold. Well, at that time, houses were like almost doubling within a couple of years. So the house that I bought, the people before me had paid 150 and now it was worth 300 and so i got hit with a huge tax bill because now my house is worth 300 so I, I was knocked back by what i had to do and it wasn't working yet i knew it was supposed to be in california so i did what we all do we think well we've got to be frugal and i don't want to go in debt so i'll sell some things so i sold a car my dad in atlanta georgia told me about a van that somebody was getting rid of. And I had small kids at the time. And so I said, well, I'll buy that minivan. I, I just I hated saying those words. <laughs> minivan. So I sold, I sold what I had and I bought, and my dad and my Sister and my mom drove this minivan from Atlanta all the way to Southern California. It did great. And I'm like, this is great. It, I have a car that's paid off. I can make my, I can make ends meet. Man, I just thought this is going to be, this is great. What, what, uh, I have figured this thing out. And I even gave God credit for it. God didn't like that minivan. My dad, my family gets on a plane, they fly back home, and about two weeks later, I, things don't start breaking down. And the transmission, and, the, and, it's, and get this fixed and that fixed. I mean, I, I paid for a new car by the time I had 
fixed it. Trying to fix it to sell it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, God, please. And in Southern California, I was coming from Florida. Florida, you go to the beach, it's all about shorts, flip-flops, and shirt optional. You know, I'm talking about for the guys. <laughs> and maybe your hair going in one direction. When you get to Southern California, it's everything's a fashion show. And I go out and see women jogging in our neighborhood, and they got earrings. And, you know, and I'm like, it's not running. And this is not weather. <laughs> This, there's no humidity, and there's no bugs where we live. This is not right. Thank you, God, for letting me live here. And, uh, and so <laughs> everything is about image. We noticed about the neighborhood. We lived in a, a fairly good neighborhood. But everything was about image there. And, uh, uh, and it's very easy to get sucked into that when you're, especially as a young couple. And so I noticed that some people, we go in certain neighborhoods in our minivan. It was a Plymouth Grand Caravan. Yeah, yeah, some of y'all have seen that, haven't you? And so we go in there, <laughs> and you never know when it would strike. It would start burning oil. <laughs> and so you're going through this really nice neighborhood. And you feel like you're the Beverly Hillbillies, and you know, you're riding through it, and all of a sudden, boom, 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 this fall, the smoke. And it's like, you knew where we were because we left a trail of smoke. You could just track us, you know. Oh, it was so horrible. Because I figured, I thought I knew what I did. Now, along about that time, some things happened financially. Had I just waited and let God do what he was doing, and trusted the word that he gave me, everything would have been all right. But no, I had to go get a minivan. I didn't even want a minivan. I thought I was being spiritual. I don't know why. This is not in my message, minivan. But that's what I did. So don't let, don't get so distracted by the circumstance you miss what the, what the word was. So Abraham and Sarah are given, they're given a word, Right? And sometimes, you know, and you read, you know, the Hebrews 11, the faith chapter, and you see the, the, the great roll call of faith in Abraham. I think it's uh, 11 verse 8 where he says, and Abraham left not knowing where he was going. That takes a lot of faith to be able to go when he left. You see, one thing we don't like to talk about in church is that this, of often obedience means leaving the comfortable. But in the, in, the, in the uncomfortable lies the blessing. So Abraham does this. Let me show you. Um, well, I just can't get off of this. Many, many of us want the blessing of Abraham. But we're not willing to have Abraham's obedience. We must have the obedience if we want to have the blessing. That'll... That's another message for another time. Genesis 15, 18 in the New Living Translation because thank God we got off the Amplified. So the Lord made a covenant with Abraham that day and said, I've given this land to your descendants all the way from the border of Egypt to the great Euphrates River. Now, in another version, it says, and the Lord made a covenant with Abraham that day and said, I've given this to your descendants all the way from the river of Egypt to the great Euphrates River. Now, this is what I want you to see, and this is the crux of the message today. All right, put it up, guys, this map. I like pictures, not this one. We're going to have it right here so I can point to it, right? The map, there it is. All right, now, I did this yesterday from my hotel room. That blue line is just, I did a, a Google map saying, take me from the river, the Nile River, which is the river of Egypt, to the Euphrates. And so you see that. Is there any way to get it back here on this screen, guys? Okay. Now, I want you to see right here. Here's Israel. Don't get hung up about this line. I just want you to say, God gave this to Abraham. This is what he had from here to there. Right over here is the Gaza Strip. Thank you very much. So 
So this is what I want you to understand today. And this is really, I want you to get this. This is not my, and please, uh, Rolling Stone, all your magazines and Right Wing Watch, or Right Nut Jobs, all those. <laughs> Make sure you quote me accurately. And in all seriousness, Pastor Hank, if, if I, you, you're the father of this house, you let me know if, I'm, if I get off base here. So I submit to your authority. Genesis 16 says, Sarah decides... She knows better than God, and I'm going to have to kind of move along quickly now, uh, that she knows better, Sarai was her name, she knows better than God, and so what does she do? Verse 2, so Sarai said to Abraham, the Lord has prevented me from having children go and sleep with my servant. Perhaps I can have children through her, and Abram agreed with Sarai's proposal. Now guys, (laughs) don't buy into that line. So the guy, you know, I'm like, Abraham, okay, well, okay, if you say so. <laughs> and this, you see, this is why you got to know the intention when a woman speaks, not what she says. Things like, hey, honey, everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Nope. <laughs> nope. You all right? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I never have this problem with Terry because I'm usually getting told what I did wrong. <laughs> and what do I say? That's not what I meant to say. That's not what I meant, right? Is that not what I say? Yes, because I'm so holy. So, <laughs> so, so we don't, don't buy, but Abram buys into it and he does it. So Genesis 16, 5, Sarai said to Abram, this is all your fault. I put my servant into your arms, but now that she's pregnant and she treats me with contempt, the Lord will show who's wrong, you or me. Now, I'm reading this going, you told me to go do this. Now, this is where I get off on a little bit. This is the gospel according to Jean. And um, men, this is, it takes a real man to do and hear from God on his own. You don't listen I'm not saying you don't listen to your wife, Make sure you, but you don't let someone else tell you what God said to do. He abdicated his authority and listened to Sarai. He did. He missed it. And because of that, there are issues in the world today. So, all right, so, so he goes and get a Hagar and he has... Relations with Hagar, and she has a son, and name's Ishmael. And so Ishmael is the son, and immediately she gives uh, Sarah the stink eye. (laughs) And and so Sarah says, you do something with this because I'm not handling this when later on when, uh, when, when her son Isaac's born. So because of the, the way she had handled with, um, Sarah, Hagar only did what she was told. I I have a lot of, um, you know, we can have a lot of understanding in this situation because it's just, it's a horrible situation. But it wasn't God's best. And that's the point I want you to understand. You see, it was trying to make this word come true that your descendants and father of many nations, you're like, how am I going to be a father of many nations? And meanwhile, the years are ticking by. Sarah's getting older. And you know, Abram, because he was Abram at this point, has to be looking at Sarah going, you know, I don't know if this is going to work. So even Sarah didn't believe that her womb could produce a child. In fact, that she laughed at God, right? She laughed at that word, the angel. Genesis 16, 10, and 12. He said, I'll give you more descendants than you can count. The angel said, you're now pregnant and will give birth to a son. You'll name him Ishmael, which means God hears, for the Lord has heard your cry of distress. The son of yours, listen to this. This is verse 16, verse 12. The son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he'll live in open hostility against all his relatives. This is Ishmael. 
So if he's going to live in open hostility against all his relatives, guess what? It's a different uh, translation said for generations. Um, this is the descendants of the Palestinians. This is what we're seeing. So it's in the word. It's scripture. He raises his fist against everyone and everyone will be against him. He'll live in open hostility against all his relatives. God's timing is always better than our timing. Genesis 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm El Shaddai, God Almighty. Say God Almighty. Almighty. Amen. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I'll make a covenant with you, with which I'll guarantee and give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell face to the ground, and then God said to him, This is my covenant. This is my promise. I'll make you a father of the multitude. What's more, I'm changing your name. No longer be Abram. Instead, you'll be called Abraham, for you'll be the father of many nations. I'll make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations, and kings will be among them. Now, understand, Abram was 99 years old. I'll confirm my covenant with you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. Here it is. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. That's us. And I will give you the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner. For to you and your descendants will be their position, their possession forever. And I will be their God. You see, we may not be Jewish, we not, but we're grafted into the family of God. So that's you and me. Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. So let me show you this next map. This is uh, Abraham and Canaan because this is what he was given. Okay. There it is. So this is what he has. He was given Canaan. Again, I want you to see. Go to the next picture real quick. Gaza. Gaza didn't come across real well. Okay, you can go back. Didn't realize it was so bad. Gaza is right here. This was the land given to Abraham. This is Canaan. Abraham and Canaan, Genesis 12, 10, Genesis 18 through 20. This is it. Right here, Hagar receives the news that she'll bear a son, Ishmael. That happened right here. God promises a son to Abraham and Sarah. Mamre. Abraham receives the blessing of Melchizedek. This is where it all happens. So I want to leave that up for just a moment because I want you to grasp that. This land was given to Abraham. This land is the land of the Jews. This land is Israel's land. God gave promises to Abraham and his child. Notice the scripture doesn't say to his children. It doesn't mean, it is as if it meant many descendants. Rather, it says to the child. And of course, that's talking about Christ, Jesus Christ. Acts 7, 5 in the New Living says, God gave him no inheritance there, not even one square foot of land. God did promise, however, eventually the whole land would belong to Abraham and his descendants. Even though Abraham had no children yet. So God made a promise to Abraham, changes his name, and Sarah. Of course, we know the story, you know, and she has, she has uh, Isaac. So God makes a promise. Nothing looked like it was going the way it should. And yet, she has a baby. This makes no logical sense. There's no doctor in the land today Today, 2023, that would say, sure, you can have a baby at 90. They may, they'll give you the, uh, well, if everything lines up and possibility and, you know, if you're, everything's healthy. Uh, no, they're not going to give you any hope for that. Imagine how it was then to have a child at 90. And she nursed him. This is not normal. It's not logical. It doesn't fit our theology. It doesn't fit what we read about in health class at school, back when they taught health. It doesn't fit. 
yet it's a promise. You see, we have to stay engaged to the promise and don't get disconnected from the promise in order to make it fit our logic. There's so many places with Hamas in the Bible, and I want you to understand this. And this is something that you should not just, be, not just a certain people group. It, it's, we, we, as believers, if we're not careful, we'll get over into hate for what they've done. It's not hate. But there is something that comes with being a descendant or a Gentile that's grafted into this lineage that you and I are, is that we have to understand we are warriors of God. We are warriors. We've been talking about this. This is why having a church to go to that stands up for the right things, I'm telling you, the more we travel, the less I find churches that will even admit Roe versus Wade being overturned was a good thing. Now, I could tell you names today of pastors, and you would be shocked that haven't said anything about it in their church. So, good thing you're coming to church here. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. So here's what I want to leave you with as I wrap up here, because I have to skip over stuff I didn't get to. The, the reality is God made a covenant. And there's nowhere in Scripture that we find where God says, you know, I don't, nah, forget that list. I'm not going to do that. So if there's been a covenant broken, it wasn't God. If there's a promise made, it's a promise made that it rests on the authority and the integrity of who God is. So his promise was to give that land to Abraham and his descendants from generation to generation. Do we, do we pray for those who are murdering innocent people? Absolutely we pray for that. But we do not shy away. Do not get sucked into something that says this vernacular, this, um, the, uh, the whole narrative, that's the word I'm looking at, that says free Palestine. Palestine attacked Israel. This is, not, this is not up for discussion. Now you say, oh, I can't believe they're showing the, these, this footage of, uh, of people being slaughtered in their beds and the babies. And they're doing that because the Palestinians said that didn't happen. Now I'm not saying go look at every gruesome picture. That's not my point. My point is they're lying to you. This goes into the rumors of wars, the rumors around the wars. We, you need to understand this is what's happening. So how do we respond? How do you and I respond to this? We're instructed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yeah. We're doing that. We already did that this morning. Pastors already did that. Next up, the next thing we have to live in is to not fear. Fear not, as you know, is in the Bible 365 times, one for every day of the year. So how do we stay out of fear? Fear will not be resident in you when the reality of who Jesus is becomes more relevant, more real to you than the reality of who the enemy is. You understand what I'm... Do you get that? You see, the more, the more I'm in the Word, the more Scripture I'm in, the more that I read about who Jesus really is and was and what God did in the Old Testament, the more I understand... Who Jesus, how real God is, the more I will be aware of his promises Amen. and his covenant. So his covenant is Israel is his land. Yes. History has shown us so many times people have tried to take the land of Israel. Why would they take a land that's as big as New Jersey? Let me show you this last picture. These are the people who have tried to take Israel. 
You may have seen this on social media. On this is the last one, guys. These are st status of groups that have attempted to destroy the Jewish people. Survey says the ancient Egyptians, the Philistines, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the ancient Greeks, Romans, the Byzantines, the Crusaders, the Nazis, they're all gone. Hamas, we're working on it. So let me real quickly give you some encur another encouraging. Joel 3, verse 9. Joel 3, 9. I'm going to read it from a different version. In fact, if you go home and read all of Joel 3, you'll see this is where we are today. Where we are today. But what does he say here? Proclaim the, ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves. Gather. Go down to, I believe it's number 19. Yeah, Scripture's 19. Egypt shall be a desolation. This is the future. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness. For the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah will dwell forever in Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwells in Zion. Come on. That right there... That right there is a good, good reason to come to church this morning. Now go to that. Look, I'm going to, you don't have to do it because you won't be able to find it in time. Uh, Obadiah, verse 10. For thy violence against your brother Jacob, thy violence, that word there, Hamas, against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. Cut off forever. You see, things look one way in the world right now. Hamas is coming, and we're talking about Iran coming down, Lebanon, Hezbollah, Hamas, all of these other things that are coming. And this is why, why is this so important? This is all connected back to the United States. There's a bigger plan afoot here. I'm telling you, there's a bigger plan. This is why we need to understand. Number one, because we're believers and we stand with Israel. You should all go home and put on your Facebook. If you agree with that, I stand with Israel. It's time for you to stand up and say, I stand with Israel. And yes, it's going to cost you something. I had a pastor friend of mine, his little granddaughter came home and said, are we bombing Palestine? Why are, why are, why should, why there should be free Palestine? And he had to stop and let me explain. This is what's being fed to your children and your grandchildren in schools. And we, if we're not careful, we're going to see, continue to see what's happening at the University of Wisconsin, what's happening at Harvard, where people are coming out going, oh, the Palestinians. We're, we've got right yesterday, I believe it was, uh, a big demonstration in Times Square in New York City about freeing Palestine. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not the truth. It is a lie. It is the absolute lie of the enemy. We need to understand this is our moment. You know, I, I love to harass Eric Metaxas because he went to Yale. And he's embarrassed by Yale now. Yet he always brings up Yale. So I just let him know what Yale stands for. And, uh, but he wrote a great book on Bonhoeffer. And you should go home if you get a chance. It's a real thick book. Uh, but let me, give, let me just cut to the chase here. People didn't do anything. Good people didn't want to get involved with Hitler. They didn't want to get involved with the Nazis. They stayed home. Good church people. Good church people didn't get involved. You and I have an opportunity right now in history. They will respond. History will show what we did as Christians. We stand for Israel. We stand on the side. You get to choose. You get to choose. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. We are not going to stand on the side of the enemy. Isaiah 60, 
Verse 18 says, Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting not destruction within your borders, but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise. No more violence. No more. It is, it, we are in the end of days, but this is not the last of the end of days. It's more important than ever that we have to occupy. We need to see who God is and, and stand for his word, his people. Why? Because it's all in the book. Amen.